going. Hi, so I'm Cynthia Allen. I am the creator of Your Learning Body, an online Feldenkrais membership experience and the Feldenkrais Awareness Summits and the upcoming Feldenkrais Move Better, Feel Better 48 Hours Around the World event. And I thought that so many of you were wonderful to register way in advance that you might be going, what the heck, when, when, when are we going to get this started? So I thought I'd give you a little something today. And uh, while I'm getting set up here, I want to just say a couple of things. I absolutely love seeing you, want to see you, yes. But do keep in mind that if your camera is on, there's the potential for you to be seen by thousands of people around the world. So if that's not okay with you, turn your camera off. And remember not to carry your device with you into the restroom or change your clothes or show off people in the background that I haven't given you permission to show them off. So those things are important. We forget these days that we are on Zoom and all of these things have been happening in classes more frequently. So just be aware. Also, this is going to be a medically unsupervised experience today. And I want to I'll give you cues, but I want to give you the uh, right and permission to take really great care of yourself. Do nothing that contradicts with anything that you've been told by a healthcare professional as a restriction for yourself. Do nothing that hurts or even feels like a mild strain or causes you to hold your breath. These are all indicators of things to say to you, hmm, need to check in with myself there. Uh, and thank you for this sweet note there. I, I guess I've never got to hear you say your name out loud. So Ayala, maybe Ayala, maybe later you'll be able to tell me how to say it. I only get to see it in print all the, these years together. Um, so, well, I want to uh, bring to you a lesson today that I really consider to be something that I have gone back to over and over the years um, as, a, as a way of restoring myself to a moment of innocence. And well, what, what does that mean? Well, it means maybe as uh, one of my beloved mentors said, re, re, uh, reducing prejudices, life's prejudices, the way I carry my own prejudices in my body against myself, really. They're kind of like prejudices against myself. And, um, and it's a beginner lesson because I think it's really important that we recognize that an awful lot of people here are beginners, but it's one again that I have used over and over again. So it won't be new to those of you who are quite experienced, but those of you who are completely new to the method, could you just pop a new or something into the chat so I have an idea how many of you there might be here? And... While they are doing that, pretty new, great, new, beautiful, wonderful. So hopefully I just do a really good job of giving you a great experience today so you can be ready for this incredible 48 hours that are coming up. Um, also, if you are a practitioner or one of my students in your learning body and you would be okay being on the camera, I would like to do some spotlighting for people who feel like they might be getting confused or on the replay. To do that, I would need you to raise your virtual hand so I can find you easily. So uh, if you could do that for me, I just need uh, maybe three or four or five people that I can choose from that we end up with a really good view. And that would be so, so helpful for me. We are gonna be doing a lesson in line, side line. We'll start on the back, then we'll go to side line. You could definitely do this on the floor, but you could do it in a bed. Thank you so much, guys, that gals, appreciate that. You could do it on a bed for sure. And you could probably even do it in a recliner if it reclines pretty far back. Um, I know some recliners now are really kind of like half recliners, so maybe not so much for those. So there's some options there. If uh, you will be on one side, so you'll get to choose the side that is able to take pressure that you can lie on the easiest. If you really can't do side line, this is probably not a great uh, lesson for you. Like if you were to sit up and do it in sitting, it wouldn't, it'll do something, but it will definitely not 
uh, feel relaxing or the intended um, lesson that I have in mind for you. Okay, now I suggested that you have a couple of towels. And the reason is that when you're in sideline, you want to put something that's firm under your head, but enjoyable. So a towel works really well. And I folded this towel in half and then in thirds. So it's kind of longish so that if my head moves, I don't have to feel like it's rolling off or that it's getting going over something lumpy. I mean, like one end is higher than the other. It really evens it out. And for most of you in sideline, you probably want two towels folded as opposed to one, two towels folded as opposed to one. We want your head to be kind of in line with your spine when it comes time for that. Maybe a little bit lower than your spine, but definitely not higher than your spine unless you just really need that for your own health because of something that's going on with your neck or shoulders. Good. So would you like to come to the ground? Are you ready to come to the ground or the bed? Absolutely, either one is totally fine. And in that position of coming to the ground, the words that we often uh, idolize in the Feldenkrais method is lie on your back. Lie on your back. And so as you come to lie on your back with all the things that you bring with you today, right? You come with maybe things going on in your family or perhaps things going on in the world, some hopes or desires or dreams for your own body, your own movement. Just begin to feel the support of the ground for your challenges, for your dreams, for your hopes. Maybe, maybe the ground could be a support for you. And perhaps you could even begin just to let some of those worries or concerns or even the dreams that you, things you feel attached to that are coming up in your mind, perhaps they could just start to slide off, off your body, out of your mind, onto the floor. Let's let the floor, let the mother earth have them today. In one of the works I studied many years ago, they talk about mother earth being the composter of heavy emotion, that she takes it, and she turns it into fertilizer for us if we just give it over to her. And I've always loved this idea. And perhaps you will like it. And whether you are lying on a hardwood floor or a mat or a bed, this is still your ground. And that ground connects to the footers and the footers connect down into the earth. And you could take a moment just to feel how breath is arising in you, how breath flows out. And in some works we encourage, some works encourage a particular way of breathing, but we want you to breathe the way that's natural for you, that feels right for you in this moment. What feels right for you? And then let's get a little more clear about how you accept the support of the earth. So begin to just scan a little bit through, let's say the right side of your body. And you start down at that right heel and bring your attention to how the right heel is on the ground up through the back of the leg, the calf, the back of the knee, the thigh. Now, some of you have already chosen to bend your knees and have your feet flat on the ground because you heard me say, don't do anything that's uncomfortable. Don't do anything that causes strain and you feel your low back or your hip doesn't feel right. Absolutely, have those feet flat on the ground with your knees bent then. And so you would be feeling the sole of the foot 
the sole of the foot. So as you scan along that right leg and into the right side of the pelvis and you feel what's heavy, what's light. And then you could compare that to the left side. So we wanna start allowing our brains to get to know ourselves uh, much clearer, much easier. And this is easier to do when we compare something like pressure, something your brain is always paying attention to, pressure and how it's different from right to left. Perhaps one area is very pressed down, almost uncomfortably so, or another, on the other side, it might be lifted. And then coming back up to the right side pelvis again, and just scanning from right side of the pelvis to the left side of the pelvis, and then the right side of the low back to the left side of the low back, we go from a pretty heavy part of the body, usually grounded in a pretty significant way for most. Occasionally there's someone who kind of grips and holds their pelvis away from the ground. That might be you. But many people just really rest on the back of the pelvis and may feel like there's a pressure spot even there somehow for them. It might be more towards the right or the left, or it might be more towards the tailbone or the top. Uh, in the middle of the sacrum. Maybe you just feel like, no, I'm, I'm totally even, Cynthia. I, I'm good to go here. That's great too. And compare that space behind the low back. Most people have a space there, especially at the beginning of a lesson. Allow yourself to tune in and feel that. How much space is there from on the right side? Is that a larger space? or a smaller space than on, that's on the left side, or is it even? <clears throat> and then you may not feel contact again right away with the ground, Where, how far up along the right side of the ribs, or maybe it's not till the right, some part of the right shoulder blade that has contact. And how is that different along the left side? and compare the sensation behind each of the two shoulder blades, what, which one feels maybe flatter or rounder, or one more pointy, angular. Perhaps one feels lifted. One feels pressed back. One feels heavy, one feels light. In comparison, in comparison. Notice how you like to have your arms. Do you like to have them stretched out down by your sides? And if you bring your arm or your arms on, might be your hands are on your belly, right? Your hands could be on your belly. And then could you bring your arms down by your side just for a moment? So they're more down closer to your side than out to the side. And just in that position, how comfortable is that? And how are the palms each line? Just one palm fly up or turned in or out or down? Do they both lie that way? Or is there a little difference in one to the other? A little difference in the angle of the elbow perhaps. And then the space behind your neck and the weight of your head on the ground. And that's an interesting one because some people feel that their head is uncomfortably pressed into the ground. And others may feel like, oh no, it's kind of lifted and it's almost a strain on my neck. And then just follow your breath for two or three more times and just, just check to see if there's anything else that you feel like, oh, I could let that go. I could let that soften a little bit in me. It could be a thought, it could be an emotion, it could be a muscle, an area of your body. I could just let it soften. I could just let it maybe even really, really further take the support of the earth, of the ground. Now, please 
then choose a side that would be comfortable that you think would be comfortable for you to lie on for, you know, a while, because we're going to make this a lesson that stays on one side so that we can keep the lesson a little bit shorter, which I think is better for new folks. And go ahead and roll onto that side that you're choosing. And on that side, if you would take a moment to put the right, just right amount of padding underneath your head, the just right amount of padding underneath your head. Again, you're looking for your head to be more and less in line with your spine, not higher than it, but not also really significantly lower. And as you're lying here on your side, bring your knees up to be um, in front of your waist almost so that you have kind of like you created the shape of a chair with your body. If I stood you up, somebody could sit on your lap and you sit on the chair seat and not fall off. And so your feet, you'll find your feet nestled on top of each other. And then you have your head on the support and can you bring your arms out in front of you at shoulder height? So they're extended out long at shoulder height. So you want enough something in front of you that you can rest your arms on. If you're on a bed, then back yourself up on the bed so you're comfortable. So this is the basic position, but you get to make all kinds of choices towards your own health. So if you find something about this doesn't work, you could try, maybe you say, look, I think I need a little something between my knees. You're allowed to do that. You're allowed to say, I, I need something between my arms. You're allowed to do that. I need a little more or a little less under my head. You're absolutely allowed to do that. I need to change sides. Absolutely do that. I need to take more frequent breaks than she suggests. Absolutely. You are empowered to do that. Now, feeling the top hand resting on the bottom hand. Just kind of notice that what it's like to just actually feel your hand resting on the other hand. These are things that when we are in love with someone, whether it's a child that we've fallen in love with, a little, you know, our, our first little one and our that we're parents of or a grandchild, and we touch hands with somebody or a lover, you touch hands with them and you feel their hand. Can you just notice that quality of how one hand is resting on the other and that there's a kind of, a kind of light pressure, but also some heat, some heat, right? And some sensation perhaps of texture already. And then follow that top arm sort of back through the hand to the forearm and elbow and into the shoulder. And we're gonna keep that arm straightish. So if your elbows are bent, you don't have to like uncomfortably straighten them, but just have the idea that you wanna keep that arm straight. Not bend it certainly anymore if possible. And then begin to slide that top hand, that top arm a little bit forward in the direction of the lower fingertips and even the floor or the bed or the surface beyond. And then slide it back to where it began. So I call this lesson Restoring Innocence because even if you've done it before, if you can bring yourself to this idea of exploring for the first time, it does begin to erase some of life's prejudices, some of the things that have happened and we take on in our bodies. And as you do this just simple motion of sliding that top hand a little bit forward, you begin to feel the textures of the bottom fingers. And then maybe you feel the surface, you start to touch the surface beyond just a little bit. Like, oh, there's my mat or my bed or my floor. And so there's temperature changes and there's textural changes. And if you can just allow yourself to maybe tune in to some of those things as you do this really right at the beginning, it's a very small movement. 
and you probably feel like, oh, if I want to let my fingers go a little ways further, that something has to happen with the shoulder blade, that the shoulder blade starts to slide away from the spine because there's not much extra room to take up, right? To get when you've already unbent the elbows, you can't get much from the fingertips and the elbow. It comes, starts to come from somewhere else. Oh, that's nice. So very simple, very gentle, maybe just a couple of more times. And then already, already, I invite you to roll onto your back and rest for a moment because we want to keep comparing the changes from our sides to our back. What keeps changing and happening? Now I have put some people up on spotlight so that if you get really disoriented, just like if you were in a class with other people alive here in Cincinnati with me, you might take a peek, right? You might go, I want to see what they're doing. So you can do that and see what they're doing. And they're not spotlighted because they are doing it right. They're not spotlighted because there's some perfect way to do it. They're just there to show you different ways that we interpret movements. And you could try one of them on for size. So as you just lie here, already having done really almost nothing, Something changed already in your contact with the ground. And then once again, roll back onto the same side. Again, as long as it's okay for you, we'll just keep working with the same side. Same arrangement, knees in front of the waist, your feet underneath your knees. So you've got a nice long spine, your head resting on some padding, one arm on top of the other. So again, slide that top arm a little bit forward onto the ground so that you follow the, the texture and the, and the temperature and the shapes. And then begin to notice what happens with your breastbone as you do that. What happens with the breastbone. What happens with the front of your face? So you could certainly do this movement in a way where the front of your face stayed forward. You could try that so that you don't let the head turn. And then you could try doing it a couple of times where maybe the nose kind of turned in towards the pillow or the floor as you do the movement. And this is where if you have too much padding, you'll really notice it because your nose will kind of get stubbed against the padding. It will keep it from rolling. So you can play with the amount of padding under your head. Okay, and then pause for a moment. And let's start to explore movement in a different direction. So what if you keep that top elbow relatively straight and you begin to slide the hand back on the lower arm? You begin to slide the hand back on the lower arm. And you don't need to push for longer or further, just what's, what makes sense to you right now with how you understand the potential of the movement, what makes sense? Mm -hmm. And so the shoulder blade will, is attached to the arm. So as you stroke the arm back, you probably feel the shoulder blade gets a little bit closer to the spine. And then you return the hand back to where it started, its beginning position. And then you slide the arm back again and the shoulder blade gets a little closer to the spine. Mm -hmm. That's it. And let's connect the two movements. So you slide forward and you feel the shapes of the fingers and the surface beyond and those beautiful touch te temperature changes. And then you slide it back and your hand comes along your wrist and your forearm and maybe towards your elbow. And as you do that, begin to notice what's going on with the breathing. What's happening with the breath? the breath 
be somehow helpful to you. You might have found you were holding it hmm, at some point. Or maybe as you slide the arm forward, you breathe in. You could try that. And as you slide the arm back, you could breathe out. Does that facilitate the movement in any way? Or how about if you try breathing out as you slide forward, the arm slides long in front of you, and then in as the arm slides back towards the elbow. Mm -hmm. And then start to notice that movement of the head. What's happening with it? Would the head like to follow the movement? If you keep that upper arm, the elbow straight, what else needs to happen to allow you to just slide maybe just a millimeter more in each direction? It needs to happen with the breastbone, not just the head, but maybe the breastbone. And you might feel that the top knee is uh, lifting, but we wanna actually keep the knees on top of each other. So they might slide a little bit but it's not lift. See if you can explore the movement more in the upper torso than in the lower. Okay, that's lovely. Yeah, and then when you're ready, you can come to just a nice pause and you can come again to your back in your own time. So what I really want to help you find today, particularly as you get ready to go into the 48 hours experience is this permission to take care of yourself, to not push yourself in any way. And while some lessons will move at a, at a quicker pace, in general, we want to be moving at a very gentle, easy pace because we wanna discover some new pathways, some different ways of doing movement, as opposed to layering a new movement on top of some old habits that are maybe not so helpful. So as you lie here and you notice now, hmm, maybe even more change, with your contact to the ground. It's a difference now between how the shoulder blades are lying, the pelvis, the low back. And if it's okay with you, come back to the same side. If you discovered that you need to change sides or you just need to take a break from this whole thing, that's totally okay. One arm is on top of the other, the knees and the feet are on top of each other and feel that top thigh. And let's imagine that top thigh and that top femur, the knee to the hip is sort of like an arm and begin to just take that top leg, slide it a little bit in the direction of forward. Now, direction of forward will be along the shape, the natural length and shape of the femur. It's not like you change where the knee is already pointing. So there might be a little bit of an incline there, but if you brought your knees mostly in front of your hip, it'll be in front of your waist, it'll be mostly forward. And it, it can't go probably as far as the hands can go, but you can still listen through your top knee to what's happening against the bottom knee. And you can listen along the inside edges of the thighs as they move in relationship to each other. And you can still make the movement quite small and quite gentle. 
and the feet will stay on top of each other. They're not going to lift up. They just stay there resting on the ground. The knee doesn't really lift. I mean, it maybe lightens a tiny hair to make the sliding easier, but probably isn't even necessary to do that because the pelvis is turning to go with this knee, right? The, where does that movement really come from? Probably back somewhere in the pelvis. You have the intention of moving the knee forward and the pelvis helps to turn. Then pause with your knee on top of knee. And let's do the retraction. Slide the knee backwards in space a little bit. Again, the feet stay more or less on each other. And do that movement a few times where the knee slides back. Uh -huh. That's nice. And then put them together, the knee slides forward, the knee slides back. To slide the knee back, do you really need to lift the knee? Maybe it could just stay more or less resting that's touching along the inside edge. But not something you force. It's not something you force, you're just curious. Things. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, lovely. Let that go. Let that go and lie on your back, please. Just if you have a lot of padding under your head on your side, you might need to remove that when you go to your back so that your head is not uncomfortably wedged up. Maybe a little bit more change about how you accept the support of the ground or how the ground rises to support you. And if you were someone who's Low back is uncomfortable when your legs are long. You might check it out to see if that is becoming more comfortable. You might take your legs long for just a moment and go, is that more comfortable now than it was before? You don't have to leave them there, of course. And feel your breath. Feel your breath. Well, it's the breath starting to flow in and flow out, perhaps a little bit more pleasurably, not necessarily deeper, not necessarily larger, just more pleasurably, maybe. And then bring yourself back onto your side for one last time. Bring your arms out in front of you, stack your knees up so they've got that nice way so that the lower legs are parallel to your spine. The lower legs are parallel to your spine, which means the feet will be more underneath your knees than underneath your bottom. And now begin to slide your arm and your knee a little bit forward and feel can that be enjoyable to you? The stroking, the stroking is a, is a movement that many people find to be quite pleasurable to do for someone else and then for do for yourself, but what, or to, or for someone else to do along your arm, your leg, for example, can you enjoy it here as you do your arm stroking, as your knee kind of strokes along the other knee? And feel now how probably the nose and the belly and the chest roll towards the ground, or they could maybe, as the knee and the arm goes long. And then as the knee and the arm comes back, we're going to start to retract them back through the middle, back in space, and probably the chest and the belly start to turn ahead, starts to turn a little towards the ceiling. Maybe you could try not letting those things happen and feel how the movement is. And then you could try to let them come along for the ride. 
so that the nose might even turn really, really towards the floor and the breastbone really towards the floor as the spine of your upper back turns towards the ceiling. And then when your arm strokes back and your knee strokes back, you may find that as the back turns towards the floor, the chest and the nose are turning towards the ceiling. Okay, good. Then just take a pause with this on your side for a moment. Just bend your elbows maybe and rest your arms in a more comfortable position for a, a moment. Maybe, maybe if you like them the way they are, of course you can leave them. Rest your attention. So what we've been doing up to now is what we call undifferentiated movement primarily. We're not really asking you to separate body parts too much from each other. Everything kind of moves together. But we're going to start to explore what we call differentiated movement, which allows you, your brain to get clearer. It actually allows your brain to get clearer about the parts of yourself. And then when you bring them back together, they often function better. So bring your arms back out in front of you again and begin to stroke your arm forward and your knee back. The arm forward and the knee retracts. Oh, now this starts to get a little bit more challenging. And so if this feels very discombobulating, that is totally normal. And you do that a couple of times. And then you'll start to take the arm back as the knee slides forward. So you'll start to go through the neutral. The movement will be much smaller in all likelihood. And it's totally fine and probably even preferable that when you make these differentiated movements, they become smaller. And you will lose track and you'll find everything is moving the same direction and you can maybe smile or laugh at yourself. And then you can come back to Again, when the arm slides forward, the knee, the hip slides back. When the knee, the hip slides forward, the arm slides back. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And why is it beautiful? It's beautiful because of the quality of the way you're exploring, not because you're doing something right. It's the quality of the exploration that makes it lovely. Okay, let's bring it all back together again. Slide everything forward at the same time, knee and arm, and then slide everything back. And you might discover, oh my goodness, it feels like there's something easier about it that I can maybe go a little further, but even if it's not further, there's just a nicer quality to it. And now we're gonna mix it up another way so that every time you slide the arm and the knee forward, you, you turn the head a little towards the ceiling instead of towards the floor. Now think small. So the head and eyes look towards the ceiling instead of towards the floor. And then when you take the knee and the arm back, the head and eyes look towards the floor. So now we're differentiating the head and the eyes from the movement. And this is a, usually a lot more challenging and you can definitely crank on your neck. So you're thinking small with that movements of the head, small, doesn't need to be big. None of the movements need to be big. When we're challenged, going smaller is better. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you still breathing? <laughs> still breathing? Yeah. Can you laugh when you lose track and then you try to come back to it? Yeah. Good. Take it all back together again. Let everything go forward. Let the chest, the belly button know about the movement. As you slide forward, the nose knows about the movement. Everything slides back together. It all knows the movement. Even though the arm is still straying straight, you're probably finding, oh, I can feel my elbow maybe with the heel of my hand, or oh, I don't know how far up your other arm you feel. Good, and then pause when you're ready and rest again on your side. You can find a comfortable way there to rest. If you need to change positions anytime, you change positions. There's nobody here to please except yourself.
Nice. Good. I'm glad to see. Glad to see some position changes, some claiming for yourself what's right for you. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, that's perfect. Now you could even do these movements in your imagination. So it wasn't something we talked about, but you can make them quite small. And the way to make them the smallest, but still have clear movement is in your imagination. And it works quite powerfully. So there's so many options because there's people here with all kinds of experiences, right? Different things that have happened to them. So in the Feldenkrais work, we value imagination, small micro movements, a great deal. Slow, gentle. Okay, please uh, come back into the same position. Let's do something, one more thing that's a little different. Bring your arms on top of each other. If you wanna continue, if you don't, that's fine. Knee on top of knee and make your little stair step position. So, Think about the stroking or experience that stroking of the arm going forward and the nose is following the arm. Can you turn the eyes towards the ceiling in that direction a little bit? And then as you stroke the arm back and then nose follows the arm, can you turn the eyes a little towards the floor? So now this gets to be on this almost ridiculous side, right? This is like, are you kidding me? And can you breathe and do that? And so we're just clarifying really these super important relationships of counter rotation in the body. Sometimes everything turns and sometimes there needs to be some counter rotation. Walking is an experience of counter rotation. Turning is more everything going together. Then after you do that, maybe three or four more times. And of course, again, you're, you're like, that's difficult. Cynthia. that's not even possible, you might be thinking. And it is possible, but it, uh, it is something to play with, to have a playful attitude about instead of a harsh one. See if you can be giggly about it instead of uh, judgmental for yourself or for the idea of the, of the movement in itself. And then take it all back together again. Everything goes back together. Arm slides long, arm slides back, head rolls, eyes roll with the movement, roll along in the skull. It just maybe your eyes are closed. Maybe you do a few movements that way. Maybe you do a few movements with your eyes open. What's pleasurable for you? And then please roll onto your back. And then just, just take a moment for yourself just to lie and rest your attention. Nothing that you have to figure out. Let's come back. Let's come back now to noticing what's the contact like now, starting at the heels. What's the contact like now in the heels or in the soles of the foot? How is that different than the beginning? I mean, we're going to not only use the left and right as we did in the beginning, but we can use the now to the beginning to ask ourselves what, what. What's been restored to us? What's, what's happened here in this exploration? Scan up the back of each leg. Is there something different there? Some rebalancing. The weight on the pelvis.
the space behind the low back. How much of your back now is in contact with the ground compared to earlier? Why the shoulder blades perhaps a little more neutral? The weight on the back of the head, is that different? And then bringing your arms down by your side, if you don't have them there, how are they? Are they more comfortable being down by your side? Or maybe they always were. That's fine too. Is there something interesting about how the palms are lying now compared? So we don't have really pretty much anything that we want to tell you to do. We don't want you to lie with palms up or palms down, we, we want you to be able to restore for yourself this kind of neutrality that allows the arms to lie in the way that they want to lie, the way that your organism, your body wants to organize itself for its highest comfort right now. And that's really our theme, comfort and, and efficiency and pleasure and function. So we want to gradually help you. First, we kind of want to erase some of those prejudices, restore some innocence, and then we start to work with lessons that are a little more um, detailed to try to map out some really new possibilities. So we did a little bit of new possibility in this differentiation, but what we did a lot of was um, erasing, I hope, erasing some restoring some innocence and erasing some prejudices, some extra holding. Come back to the breath as it falls, as it arises, flowing through you like a wave. And then when you're ready, slowly roll yourself through a side thinking about what's the easiest way I could come up to sitting without straining my neck, without straining my neck. Just come up to sitting. So that maybe your head would not be the first thing to lift. And then in the sitting position, taking just a moment and sitting before you decide to Come to stand, just give yourself a moment in sitting before you come to stand. And then when you go to stand, again, ask yourself, what's the simplest, easiest way I could go to stand that would be good for my knees, good for my neck? What do I know about that? Maybe I don't know anything about it and I'll just do what I always do, but maybe just thinking that might give you some hints and come all the way up to stand and then just stand for a moment without even taking a step if possible. You just feel yourself in standing. And perhaps in the standing position, there's just a new way of being on your feet, a new way of being on your feet. Give yourself a moment, you wait, you pause for how is your body weight going to be in relationship to gravity in this upright way? It's like if you wait just a moment or two longer than you would think you would want to, more things can settle, can be, come clearer. And then go for a walk and find out how walking is for you right now. Walk for your own pleasure. Maybe something feels different for you in the shoulder blades. Maybe something feels different in the way that the pelvis is moving or the leg is advancing. Or maybe it just feels like your head is sitting on your spine in some way that's easier. And you just, uh, you know, you just find some aspect that you can witness for yourself. Like, huh, that seems like a change. Don't know how that happened, but it seems like a change. Okay. Walk around another moment or two for yourself and then 
that's the end of our lesson. I will stay for anybody who wants to ask questions. I'm glad it was enjoyable, relaxing, Kitty. Very glad. Uh, anybody who wants to uh, stay and make comments or ask questions, I will uh, stay for. And I just want to give a shout out to uh, Kristen. I haven't seen you in a long time. We were back together in Costa Rica right at the beginning of this Kirsten, right at the beginning of this uh, pandemic. So it's really good to see you here, Kirsten. Uh, beautiful. So if you would like to, <laughs> I like that little heart. You're welcome. You're welcome. If you would like to ask a question or make a comment verbally, or either audio or uh, on video, just raise your virtual hand. You will do that at the bottom of the screen where it says reactions. There's no obligation to stay and do this. It can be much better for most people to just go and enjoy the rest of your day. But I'm happy to be here to um, do that. So Linda, I'm going to ask you to unmute, Linda. Oh, thanks. Uh, I actually typed it in the chat. So if you were to do this on your own, this exercise we've just done, would you recommend then uh, doing it again on the other side? Yeah, if the other side is comfortable for you to be on, you could definitely go over to the other side. Um, you could certainly teach this uh, lesson as a, um, you know, a, a, a bilateral lesson, want changing sides if you wanted to and make it a longer lesson. Would it make you more, or would you feel more balanced? Possibly, but, you know, being feeling balanced is not necessarily what we have as an initial goal in the Feldenkrais okay. work, Linda. So this is a kind of different thing for us. Okay. So we we um, we know that there's a lot of information that gets transferred back and forth between left and right parts where there's a mirror image, and we also know that the brain is thinking a lot about differences. So it, it doesn't tune into sameness much. So when you walk around and everything feels the same, that isn't what it's, it's not like going, hey, everything feels the same. It's not really paying attention. But when you walk around after a lesson and you're like, wow, I feel really different over here in the right foot or the way this left arm is moving, or I can turn easier to one side to look than I could before, which I should have given you all that as a test because a lot of, for a lot of you, turning, turning your head has really improved quite a bit. Um, so we like leaving people sometimes, not all the time, sometimes with a bit of feeling of unbalance, like things aren't even, right? Like lots of works try to make everything even. We don't try to make them even all the time. There's nothing wrong with making them even, but there's also something really lovely about sometimes leaving the brain to sort of fool around with it. Thank you. Now, if that bothers you though, Linda, like you're like, I can't stand it, Cynthia. This is just ridiculous. I have got to, I got to do something about that. Absolutely lay down on the floor and, and do something about it. Great. When you do it on your own or the replay comes out later, you can use the replay again. The one thing when you do it on your own is to try to really keep this slow pace I guided you in. That's hard to do sometimes without someone else's voice. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Thank Linda. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to go to Pam here. I think it's Pam on my little tiny screen. Here you go, Pam. Hello. Hi. Okay. So, hi. Um, I have had this uh, happen pretty much all the, in the Feldenkrais things. And I actually, I think I even asked Lavinia this at one point. When I lay down and I do these things, I get this pressure headache. Where are you? I can't see you. Um, is Cynthia here? I, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Oh, there you are. Sorry. I'm with you. I missed you. <laughs> uh -huh. I get this pressure headache here. And um, the, it just seems to, and, at some point I've figured out that it has something to do with my blood pressure goes up. Hmm. And so it becomes, so uh, this took me a long time to figure out, but there's some blood pressure thing that happens and I just get heavy and pressured in my head. And uh, I tried putting a pillow under today and it only moderately helped. So I don't know what to do about that. 
Well, that's, you know, at, th at this point in my career, not that many things surprised me, but that's a new one for me. And um, I think I would maybe, if you have anything like a recliner, I would use a recliner or I would get a foam wedge um, and where you could wedge, not because a pillow willy won't give you much of an incline. So I think you need a little more incline in your whole body. Um, so I would probably try a foam wedge. You could go buy um, a, a kind of wedge from a foam place that you might have locally. Um, and maybe try to get yourself on a bit of an incline and see how that goes for you. Um, I would also, I, I mean, would just also be a little bit curious about uh, what's going on with you in your shoulders and neck. And that might need somebody to uh, work with you privately just to kind of get a better idea of that. But, you know, try the incline first, if you can arrange that for yourself for some lessons that are coming up. Um, you might be yeah. able to figure out a way just to fold some things on your own to make something, but I think it needs to be fairly firm. So it feels like a floor to you and not uh, like something super cushy and soft. Yeah. I used to, I used to have that before my heart transplant, but <laughs> now, it's, now, I, now I ostensibly need it, but there's something going on and has been with, uh, I used to not be able to lay down at all, but now with the new heart six years in, I haven't had that trouble, but I have had that trouble uh, for a couple of, for a while mm -hmm. laying down in Pilates or Feldenkrais or these kinds right, of things. Right. And do you, and how about for bed in bed? How do you sleep? I stay pretty flat. I lay flat. Okay. So there's something going I, on then. Okay. There's something going on besides, there's something going on besides the position then. So it's the movement somehow. So something's happening and, you know, it, I, it, it's so difficult to tell in uh, human beings, but I'll tell you after like a big surgery, like a heart transplant, you could actually still be defending movement in the chest that goes on for some time. Oh, yeah for a really long time. So I think you would just do really well with some private work if you can find it. But even so, maybe just me asking you in the future, could you just tune in to what's happening through the torso, the chest? And um, if you see, you'll see some lessons being done in sitting in the 48 hours. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look harder to see if there's some that look like they'll be about softening the ribs or the chest and sitting. But if you want to send a note to support at futurelifenow.com, I'll try to look through them and see if there's one that maybe would work with that in sitting. Um, there's definitely lessons that do. I just don't know whether there is in the 48 hours. So you might want to work with some rib softening, sitting, just, just really, you know, uh, this whole acceptance of what a what a big deal it is, you know, and how much that chest has been holding on for you. And those ribs have been trying to, trying to make sure that heart is safe, um, could very well start to change that relationship. So if you'd have told me you couldn't lay flat in on the ground for sleeping, I would say, you know, something different, but now that makes me think that makes me mm -hmm. think me too. leftover from that surgery. That makes me think that mm -hmm. so might be worth playing with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Great, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, Janice, that you were, yeah, that was, yeah. Janice is coming up here. Let me get Janice to unmute and let me get. Okay. I've unmuted. Great. Go Janice. Um, I have a question just about my knees actually, when they were together during that exercise, um, when I move my hands, sliding the back and forth, they can move fairly far. Like I can see my top hand coming off almost my right hand my bottom hand right and back I can pull my hand back to almost so my hands aren't really but with my knees I'm not yeah I, I, I don't know if I've just got too much flesh between my knees or what but um no you don't but have too much not, flesh but, but it's I a much smaller movement it's I'm a much kind of, 
Yeah. They're kind of rolling almost, like they're kind yeah. of sliding on each other. They're not going off the knee. No, no, no. They won't okay. go off the knee. No. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna say that some people don't go fairly far off the knee. There are a few people that will and can do that easily, but um, no, it's not real, it's not real typical that that happens. And it's not the goal. So you're okay. you're, you're totally good, Janice. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Good exercise. Thank you. Good. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, anyone else? Let me go over here to the comments for just a minute and see if there's a... Is clicking of the shoulder bones while turning normal? Well, you know, I would say uh, tanaz, tanaz, it's not too uncommon. Um, I mean, like not as, I wouldn't call it uh, something that everybody has for sure, but, uh, you know, you can get like sort of rubbing over tendons or you can get these little joint pops or, uh, so the first thing I would say is make sure it's not uncomfortable or that it doesn't scare you. If it scares you or is un uncomfortable, then we want to change that up. I would change maybe to the other side in the future to see if it happens the other direction. You might need to put a little more under your head to support yourself and you might, or even put a pillow between your arms to see if you can take some of the weight off of it and see if that helps it. You're not trying to get the clicking for sure. Usually I don't worry about it, but, uh, it, and my experience tells me that over time, as you do more lessons, most of that will go away for the majority of people. Um, you know, there's not a great mat Carmela. So what I usually say is just use a yoga mat and then put a sheet on top of it or a fleece ta a fleece blanket. I think Arafili likes a fleece blanket because it has a lot of slide to it. Sheets uh, on top, a quilt on top is really good. Um, so almost everybody has like a yoga mat. Um, but if you don't have a mat, by the way, and you're getting ready to do these lessons, if you have a blanket that you can fold up and give yourself a little bit of uh, padding um, on, that would be nice. You don't have to be on something super, super hard. You want it to be some, you know, have a little bit of, of support that feels nice to you. You don't want something you sink way down into, or you'll lose the movement. Uh, Megan. Hi. Um, I have a question of how to place the shoulder under underneath. Like, I don't know how to place it. Yeah, because like I know sometimes it goes forward and should should it be like right down my body or should it be like a little bit forward or backward? Uh, in this lesson or in general? Um, both. Like, okay. And this lesson of, uh, it really doesn't much matter what you start with because it's going to constantly be changing. Once you start doing the stroking, you're going to be mapping out that pressure across that bottom shoulder over and over forward on top of behind forward on top of behind. So you'll actually be reeducating that bottom shoulder quite a bit as you're doing the movement. Uh, in general, if you're lying in sideline, like for bed is that you know like for bed um you i think over years if you have the shoulder underneath um tucked way behind you or way forward it starts to cause not just problems in the shoulder but some torsion in the pelvis as well so you can think about using pillows or something bolsters in front of you that make it easier for you to be uh you know, more on your side in a comfortable way without the top shoulder collapsing forward uh, as well. I mean, the boat, you know, the top shoulder collapses way forward over time and really hunches up around your neck and your ear every time you lay on your side, you're going to notice it after a long period of time. It won't notice it in the beginning that you will notice it after a long period of time. So playing with support to make it more possible for you to be comfortable on your side without a sort of that feeling like you're just sort of like collapsing over yourself or back on yourself, or there's like a, a feeling like it doesn't hold up integrally for you, then you, you mm -hmm. want to, you want to keep playing with it. Okay. So Thank that's you. not an exact answer because you really do need to play around, but hopefully it will be helpful with you for you. Can I have another question? You can. Yeah. 
so like how do i so i i found myself when i have to move my eyes is i can only move a little bit and only a little bit makes my neck like stuck mm. and point so is that a normal thing or is it like really to the stiffness in my neck causing that Well, um, I think that'll get better, uh, but your eyes don't move a very big range, right? So, I mean, you're not, if you're only moving your eyes and then you start to ask yourself to move your neck opposite your eyes, you're not talking about a gigantic range. If I like try to really push my eyes, it's going to hurt my eyes. So you can strain your eyes. So the differentiated movements don't need to be large, but having said that, Megan, you can learn to do that without stiffening your neck. So that could be something that'll come for you, that you'll turn your head one direction and your eyes the other direction without tightening your neck. That can happen. Okay. So that might happen for you in the 48-hour in the series. You could see. Perhaps it will. Yeah. Thanks. How does your neck feel right now overall? Hmm. It's, it's neutral right now. Neutral right now. So maybe even if you had parts of it that seemed a little weird or didn't quite work for you overall, the, the lesson might've helped you have that neutrality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, and we're going to go to Suzanne. Okay. Here, I got you, Suzanne. Uh-huh. Hi. Hi. Um, Thank you for the lesson. I really enjoyed it. Um, I have two questions. Uh, At the beginning, you said um, one interesting sentence, uh, among others. (laughs) Um, The way I carry my prejudices against myself in my body. Mm -hmm. And I found this really interesting, um, resonated with me. Um, could, Could you tell a little bit more? Well, why don't you tell me how it resonated with you, how you interpreted it? What, what did it mean for you? Um, so if I have uh, prejudices um, about, um, I don't know if I uh, understood correctly, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> okay. So uh, if I have some uh, thoughts about, somebody else or about me it's about you so it's about me I can about you or it's about things that have happened to you in your life that have caused you to feel not so great about yourself or maybe you feel like hey I can't afford to move this shoulder so it could be an injury so it's Mm -hmm. your own thoughts your own prejudice maybe you think you can't do certain things you've decided I can't do those I cannot do those that could end up being a prejudice, not based in reality, right? So prejudices are things not really based in in reality. They don't have to exist. If we work with them, they don't have to exist. They could dissolve. So Mm -hmm. what, what, I just love Ruthie Alon's way of language. So, you know, she had these, this very provocative way of using language. And I thought, I'm just going to use that today because it's, it does require that we think about that a little bit. And we go, hmm, what, what am I holding against myself in a way? Mm-hmm. Or what am I holding on to that I believe about myself that maybe isn't true? Or what if I have a muscle, a prejudice, a habit, a habit of always thinking I have to hold my left glute tight in order to hold my world together? We could call that a kind of prejudice in a way. So you could play with it a lot of different ways. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is uh, like a habit on mental level, uh, mental level. It could level. be, a, it could be a, you know, certainly an unconscious level, right? My, my, not very many of us hold on to uh, prejudices once we become, I'm, I'm good. I hope we don't, once we become con- conscious of them, we start trying to play with them usually. So, um, I guess it depends. I suppose some of us may think that a prejudice that we hold uh, against ourselves or someone else, it has value. So if there's a moment when you start to go, maybe that doesn't have value. Mm -hmm. Um, And maybe, you know, 
thinking that um, I'm never going to be able to uh, reach up against again into a cabinet easily might not have value anymore. Maybe I could let that go. Mm -hmm. So it could be very literal or it could be very symbolic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, I'm deciding for four year Felden Price training. Ah. And um, could you say that this, uh, what you mentioned, um, happens a lot of times while you do the training? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The training, uh, if you, I mean, I don't know what your reasons for wanting to do a Feldenkrais training are there, uh, but they are totally, um, you know, transformative for sure. They're transformative on every level because of the degree of the immersion experience that goes on. So it's a, it's an incredible experience. Most people do it, uh, or I think I should say many people do it because they want to become practitioners but there are people who do it because they want to just do it for their own health and exploration. And that's lovely too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm just going to check here. Just make sure I didn't miss any other questions in the chat that are really important. And then I'm going to let it go. Um, okay. I think I answered that one about, I see. Yeah. Uh, Okay, beautiful. Thank you all so much for joining me. It'll be out on replay maybe yet today. Uh, and um, so feel free to pass it on. If you haven't registered for the 48 hours around the world event coming up May 1st, 2nd, and then there's also free replays through the 6th, do register. It's, it'll be a phenomenal event. So you don't have to do 48 hours. You can choose the lessons that you want to choose. And you'll, you'll learn much more about yourself and your movement. And you'll study with over 40 different teachers. It'll be a fantastic experience. And I really enjoyed being with you today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everybody.